I'm Dominic Gregory and I teach philosophy at the University of Sheffield. I research the philosophy of art. In particular, I try to figure out what gives pictures meaning and how we determine what a picture represents. And this is what we'll look at in this video. What determines what a picture represents? So for now, I'll ask you to set aside your assumptions as we look at two theories at the opposite ends of the spectrum. Look at this picture. It's a picture of a person. We recognise this. But what makes this picture a picture of a person rather than a picture of, say, a dog? This is a very interesting question because, after all, why should we interpret some marks on a flat piece of paper as a representation of a person? If we look at words, this complicates the idea of representation even more. The word Europe, for instance, stands for a particular continent, but it could have been used to stand for something else. Australia, for example. And someone who doesn't know a suitable language wouldn't be able to tell that the word Europe stands for one thing rather than another. But this isn't the case with pictures. So why is it just so obvious to us, by contrast, that this picture represents a person rather than a dog? Well, here's our first theory, resemblance. You can't just tell by looking at a word what it means, but you can tell by looking at a picture what it represents. And that's because pictures are like what they represent. However, the word Europe is nothing like the continent. But this picture of a person is like a person. It resembles a person. It's got a head, arms, body, and so on. These resemblances between the picture and a person may seem to be very important. But the situation is complicated by the fact that, really, the picture is very unlike a person. The picture does not really have a head or arms, for instance. It's got bits that represent a head and arms, but it doesn't actually have a head. It's completely flat. In this way, the picture isn't really much like a person at all. People aren't completely flat. They're much bigger than this picture. They're made up of skin and bones, etc. Right. So the picture isn't exactly like a person, but it's like a person in certain ways. In the sorts of ways that, say, a flat picture of a cube can be like a real cube. It's got a head-shaped bit, for example, which has eye-shaped bits, plus a nose-shaped bit. And perhaps those similarities between the picture and a person are what make us able to tell that the picture represents a person rather than a dog. In philosophy, we say that this theory appeals to resemblance. So, it might be claimed that what makes a picture of a person or a picture of a dog is that it's like the thing it resembles in certain ways, in terms of the shapes of some of its parts, maybe. Pictures of people often have head-shaped bits, for example, while pictures of pigs often have snout-shaped bits. But this theory needs some work. While pictures of people often have head-shaped bits, they don't always. The history of art is stuffed full of pictures that show people, but which play around with what people normally look like. Modern artists have painted loads of pictures of people that don't contain head-shaped bits in any normal sense, for example even though they're nonetheless pictures of people with heads. And who ever actually saw anyone with a head shaped like Homer Simpson's? So, there's a distinction to be drawn between mere resemblance and representation. And this leads on to a second theory. Maybe we need to look at the intentions of people who produce pictures to fully understand how pictures represent. It seems always to be possible for an artist to warp the shape of a head or of an arm or whatever when producing a picture of something. But then how is it possible for anyone reasonably to insist that to be a picture of some sort of thing, an image must have certain bits whose shape really is like the shape of what is being pictured? So maybe we should just give up on that idea then. Maybe, that is, we should drop the thought that pictures must resemble what they show, and instead we should look at what they're intended to represent. Maybe pictures of people by artists, for example, are pictures of people just because that's what they're meant to be. This idea is at the other end of the spectrum to resemblance. Resemblance is no longer treated as important. Instead, this theory claims that what a picture is meant to represent is critical. Put simply, pictures simply represent what their makers want them to represent. Now, some pictures do make that last idea quite attractive. Pictures of people by toddlers often have next to nothing in common with the people they show, but they are still pictures of people. Why? 
Isn't it just because that's what they're intended to be? But on the other hand, this latest view also has some rather worrying features. Reconsider our starting point, our ability to tell that this picture is a picture of a person rather than of a dog. Suppose that all that matters to whether a picture is a picture of a dog is the say-so of the person who made the picture. And let's now suppose that the person who made that picture did in fact mean for it to be a picture of a dog. Then the picture is a picture of a dog rather than of a person. But this seems bizarre. You surely can't make that picture into a picture of a dog just by really, really wanting it to be one. No dog looks remotely like that. And note that we've also now completely lost the contrast between pictures and words like Europe. For we've arrived at a view on which there can be completely random associations between pictures and what they represent, just as there can be completely random associations between words and their meanings. Well, philosophy doesn't tend to produce many definitive answers. There will probably always be discussion and new ways of looking at theories. In this video, we've looked at two approaches to understanding how pictures represent what they represent. So now it's over to you to discuss how do pictures represent what they represent.